Good morning. Before we begin, I want to thank you all on behalf of the family for being here and joining us on this celebration of a wonderful life, a meaningful life. The weather has not co cooperated so far, but it should get better, they say. The family will be receiving their visitors, their guests during their shiva today at the home of Daniel and Stacy Kamienkowski. Their address is 2728 Rockland in Shaker Heights from until 4 p.m. after the service and the burial and from 6 to 8 p.m. this evening. They ask that any donations be made to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation or the National Kidney Foundation. I lift my voice when all is dark. Into God's hands I place my heart. I'm not afraid, Adonai. I lift my eyes when all is night. When I need help, I seek God's light. I'm not afraid, Adonai. Piado of Kiruhi, I'm not afraid, Adonai. She beat Yaronai, Lenegdi Tahamid, Kimimini Balemo. Lachen samach libi, biagel kvodi, af besari, af besari, ishkon lavetach. I have set the eternal always before me. God is at my side, I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure. For you will not abandon me to death, nor let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy. Enduring happiness is your gift. Death has taken our beloved Mario David Kamienkowski. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, hear them, O God, and be with them. For Mario's love that united us in life, and in which death cannot sever. For his companionship that we shared along life's path, and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of his heart and his mind that brought us joy and happiness, and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give thanks to our God. Adonai roi lo echsar Pinot de shehi arbitzeni Almei menuchot yinahaleni Nafshi yishovev yanecheni Vemagalei tzedek lemaan nashemo Gam ki elech Pegei tzal mavet Lo irara ki ata imadi Shivta chaumi shantecha, hey maya nachamuni. Taaroch lefanai shulchan, neged sorurai, dishant avashemen roshi, kosir vaya, achtov vachesir yirdefuni, kol yeme chayai, veshavti befet adonai. The words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We learn from Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And these are the occasions that both silence and word are appropriate. At times we feel we need to share our grief through word by sharing our stories with each other. And at other times it feels better to simply sit in silence and both are perfectly fine. It is extremely difficult to say that we know another person. For a person's character is much like an iceberg. Only a small portion is visible, exposed to other people all the rest lies beneath the surface, and it is known only to God. Our rabbis convey this profound thought to us in teaching that every person has three names. Echad shekorim lo aviv ve'imo, one that his father and his mother gave him. This is the one that is given at the Brit, registered on a birth certificate, entered on school records, on citizenship papers, wherever a name is required. A second one, Shekorim lo Chaverav, the name by which he is known to his family, to friends, to those who work with and for him. This is the name that he earns by his actions and through his relations with others. The third name is the name by which God knows him. This name is the sum total of a person's life. It reflects not only the outward conduct, but the inner life as well. It deals with the relationships between a person, person's conscience and actions. It reflects the inner soul and the spiritual life of a person. We cannot say what God will call a person, but we can say how a person's life affects our own and the oppressions that he has left on our hearts and on our lives. This morning, we remember the life of Mario David Kamienkowski, a man with many names, and many titles. To Mary, he was a devoted husband with whom he shared 29 years of companionship and marriage. And together they welcomed their daughter, Sarah. To Tammy and Jennifer, Mark and Rebecca, Daniel and Stacy, to, to Jason and Vlada, and to Sarah. He was known as dad. He was a father that ensured that his children were well raised well-educated and secure. And to Metal, Reuben, Isaac, Alexandra, Ada, and Ryan, he was grandpa, a name that he acquired through good fortune, good luck, and blessing. Mario was born April 30th, 1933, and raised in Buenos Aires, the son of Bernardo and Eugenia Kamienkowski, along with his sisters Mina and Luisa. For some reason, he never liked his given name, Mauricio, so he legally changed it to the Italian name that he preferred, Mario. He felt much more comfortable with it. I understand he loved Italian food throughout his life, so it worked. As a child, Mario was known as a bit of a troublemaker who set his heart on becoming a merchant marine. His father would have none of it and demanded that his son study medicine and become a doctor. Mario did attend medical school in Buenos Aires, 
thinking that it was a joke until he witnessed his very first cadaver, at which point he set his mind differently and medicine became his, his profession in which he poured his heart and his devotion into. He arrived in Cleveland in 1959 knowing no one and quickly realizing that he hated American food, he found himself a lifelong friend, Mike, and along with Nora, he learned the ropes. He maintained a 60-year friendship with him. Mario and his first wife, Leah, together welcomed three children, Tamar, Mark, and Daniel, into their lives. Mario completed his internship as Mount Sinai Hospital, but he dreamed of living in Israel. He and his family moved to Rehovot, but that dream was very short-lived. He studied for a while at the Weizmann Institute and served as a medic during the Six-Day War, but soon after returned home to Cleveland for good, settling into the Argentinian community around 105th Street near Mount Sinai. Mario is perhaps most known by his name, Doctor. He was dedicated and devoted to his profession as a private practice gastroenterologist. He was a director, and in recent years, he was the physician advisor at Hillcrest Hospital. He was beyond generous with his time and his care to his patients. He even traveled out of town for a patient in crisis who had moved away. Mary described him as a thinking doctor, a scientific wonder, one who could diagnose without knowing all the symptoms. He, as she explained, practiced the art of and the science of medicine. With all that Mario could have had materialistically, he chose rather to live a quiet, private, and a simple life, rich in the knowledge that he had made a huge mark and a difference in the lives of his patients. He truly left a huge mark on the medical community here in Cleveland, and he earned another name besides doctor, and that is as compassionate friend. While his family will surely miss his presence, his life's work and his caring will live on as a lasting memory to all who knew and loved him. May his memory be a blessing and may he now rest in peace. Amen. I now invite his son Daniel to share some personal stories. extend uh, gratitude and, and thank you on behalf of all of us um, that, uh, that were connected by, by uh, my father. Um, as most of you know, my father was born in Argentina, um, and he grew up in a, a rough neighborhood, predominantly Italian neighborhood of Buenos Aires, and I'd say elements of that upbringing stayed with him forever. Um, he had a great love of Italian culture, uh, particularly the edible aspects, um, as has been noted. <laughs> uh, a great love of soccer, which he played enthusiastically as a young man, and it was rekindled whenever Argentina um, did well in the World Cup, uh, which is fairly often, at least every four years. Uh, his comfort with rough language probably comes from that upbringing as well. Um, there's a kind of a unique cadence to the the Spanish of Buenos Aires that's as recognizable among Argentinians as like a New York accent would be for, for Americans. Um, and this uh, the demonstration of this one night, not long after um, he and my mother moved to the United States, um, they were at the theater with another couple, also an Argentinian uh, emigrants. And my father and the other gentleman were kind of assuming that they had the cover of um, speaking a foreign language in, you know, in the United States. And so they took the opportunity to describe the appearance of the woman in front of them in rather unflattering terms. Um, and then she, at intermission, we're told that she rose kind of in a dignified manner and, and asked simply, what part of Buenos Aires are you from? <laughs> um, even with the gritty urban upbringing that he had, though, he, he didn't really um, ever kind of take to the traditional vices. Uh, he was never really a smoker or a drinker. Um, and really the only time 
I'm aware of him ever being drunk was before I was born. Um, it was way before I was born, actually, like when he was three, um, from eating a bowl of rotten cherries that had fermented. And maybe that's why he kind of stayed away from alcohol most of the time. Um, but it's also, I think, this upbringing that instilled in him the work ethic that drove him and enabled him to be such a good provider for his family and, and a caregiver for his patients. Um, growing up, I learned that what he described as a weekend off was generally a weekend where he would only work half a day you know, making rounds in the morning. I remember him taking calls from patients during dinner time. Um, as you can imagine, if you've ever required the care of a gastroenterologist, not all of those conversations were well suited for the dinner table. Um, and it might be that my current day habit of being inappropriate at the, at the dinner table stems from this childhood experience of mine. Um, but my inappropriate conversations don't save any lives. So, um, Like many men of his generation, uh, he was not comfortable being very emotionally demonstrative with affection. Um, but this belied a great love for his children um, and great pride in their accomplishments. It was apparent in the pride on his face whenever he spoke of Sarah's achievements in medical school. It was apparent in the tears of pride that he shed during the ceremony when Tammy was installed as the first female dean of a rabbinical seminary. It was apparent in the excitement in his voice whenever he would talk about Mark being quoted in the New York Times um, even if he didn't really understand what Mark was talking about. Um, and it was apparent in a very movingly simple moment of grace when he looked at me a few months ago and said, you know, you're a pretty nice guy. So while closeness and intimacy were not his comfort zones, he was still a tremendously warm and compassionate person, um, maybe ironically. And these qualities suited him well for a life caring for the well-being of others. Um, I've observed, you know, growing up in Cleveland as his son, that his kindness made a tremendous impression not just on his patients, but on the families of his patients. And I know decades after parents and grandparents were treated by, by our father, their children and grandchildren would still remember and ask him with affection and reverence, ask after him with affection and reverence. Um, and everything that I've ever seen and heard tells me that his kindness extended to those who worked with him as well. Um, and I've had many uh, nurses uh, and folks from Hillcrest that have approached me over the years and told me that, that he really knew how to treat people with respect and kindness. And that's not always common, uh, particularly in a high stress environment like a hospital. Um, there's another important aspect of my dad's life that was physical fitness, which, um, you know, it's only in recent years I've kind of forgotten about that aspect of his life during, during his illness. But I think one of the hardest things for him to let go of as he got older was the joy he got ri riding his bike through the metro parks, often with Sarah. I have fond memories from my childhood of Tuesday afternoons at the old JCC on Mayfield, uh, when he would run on the track or do a fitness class while I would play basketball in the gym. And uh, well, having a, an imported father meant that we had to learn to throw a baseball on our own. He was really impressive at one point when it came to juggling a soccer ball. Um, now, many of my fondest memories, however, center around my father and my love, shared love of music. Um, I think I was in seventh grade when I learned that there were radio stations on the dial other than WCLV. Um, every morning he would shower and shave to Carl Haas's Adventures in Good Music on the cheap Panasonic radio we had in the bathroom. So I didn't really need an alarm clock because my alarm was Carl Haas saying, hello everyone, in his German accent. Um, I discovered my love of Italian opera in high school when he uh, took me to a performance of Aida with him that featured actual live elephants on the stage during the performance, and um, elephant poop as well on the stage. Um, 
It's easy in life to focus on grievances and disappointments, but often in doing so, we miss out on opportunities for gratitude. And how fortunate I feel today to be able to reflect with appreciation on all that my father did for Tammy and Mark and Sarah and, and me to try to give us a better childhood, a much better childhood than the one that he experienced. And to set an example of how to work hard and to work with integrity and how to bring compassion and kindness to the community he served. Thank you very much for coming. As you join together with the family today and in days ahead, that will help the family with their mourning as you share your stories and your memories of Mario, how you interacted. And we know in Judaism that each time we mention somebody who we love, who we've lost, their neshama, their soul, receives an elevation. So I hope that you will be warmed and comforted by all the stories that you share with each other and that you hear from others during these coming days and months. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys that we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, Mario too shall live, for he is a part of us as we remember him. We ask all who are able to please rise at this time for El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, Shochen Bam Ramim, Hametze Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfe Shina. Im kedoshimu tehorim, kezo haraki ya mazirim. Ed nishmat Moshe David shalach leolamo. Bal rachamim yasti rehu beseta kenafav leolamim. Vitzro bitzro chaim et nishmato, Adonai hu nachalato, Vianuach v'shalom hamishkavo, Venomar amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Mario, David, Kamienkowski, son of Bernardo and Eugenia, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, <clears throat> let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and let us all say, Amen. You may be seated. This concludes the service here at Berkowitz Cumin, and we will continue at Mount Olive Cemetery with the interment. <laughs>